Yep, times sure have changed since Alan Jackson was a boy in Noonan, Georgia. Did you know the way he introduced himself to his future wife would probably get him arrested today? Alan Jackson and wife Denise moved to Nashville in the mid-80s, a few years after getting hitched, and not long after she met Glenn Campbell at an airport and said, hey boo, you need to listen to this demo. We'll skip his five years of struggles, except for this awesome moment from the mid-80s when he was rocking short hair and a sweet stash while singing George Jones. Alan Eugene Jackson stayed faithful to country music during his now 30 plus year long career. In fact, he fought for it. Let's go over a few of his more impressive outlaw moments. There's his ACM protest. In 1994, he wore a Hank Williams t t-shirt on the red carpet. Everyone else was wearing tuxedos or dresses. They should have known this was coming. Do you see it? Check out Alan's drummer. Yeah, the guy isn't holding sticks because Alan is protesting being forced to sing to a track. How about five years later at the CMAs when he stood up for George Jones? I had choices. You see, the possum was only given one minute to sing his song, so Alan did it for him and the crowd went bonkers. Years later, when the possum died, Jackson would perform his hit again at the funeral. Songs like Murder on Music Row, Gone Country, and Three Minute Positive Not Too Country Uptempo Love Song were all slaps to the establishment's chin-up faces. Dude might come across as mild-mannered, and he might occasionally look silly wearing things like this and this, but it doesn't take no sass. Posing in tidy whiteies also takes but bravery. But Alan wouldn't do that. In 1995, he agreed to promote Fruit of the Loom underwear and signed a $40 million contract. No posing, trust us, we look. He just did commercials and concerts for fans of country music and a reliable comfort fit waistline. Tall, quiet cowboy might have stood up to the man, but he wasn't afraid to work with the man either. During his career, he's endorsed underwear, Ford trucks, and Miller Lite. Remember this commercial? Come on, come on, let me show you where it's at. It's hard to figure out how a guy who grew up one of five kids in an expanded tool shed with no running water did such a good job navigating modern business practices, but the truth is he might have done that because he grew up so humble. From the age of 12, the son of Daddy Jean and Mama Ruth was working. He tried college, but quit after a year. In 1979, he married Denise Jackson. Yep, she was already a Jackson. And in the years since, they've had three kids, split up, got back together, bought a bunch of houses, sold some of them, helped America through 9-11, fought cancer, and guided one of the most impressive country careers of all time. Was it love at first sight? More like love at first fright. When she was 16, she was getting down at the Dairy Queen when Jackson rolled up and tossed a penny down her shirt. And then he asked to retrieve it. That didn't work. So he left, hid in the back of her car, and as she drove away, scared the peanuts out of her. Okay, if there are kids or teenagers watching, we can't stress this enough, do not try this you'll likely get punched, killed, or arrested. But in mid-70s rural Georgia, that was just having a good time. So now you know Alan Jackson. Other things to know? He started wearing a cowboy hat to cover a scar. He's a jackman. He can wiggle his ears, and his first band was called Dixie Steel after a brand of nails. Also, he sold his 1955 T-Bird to buy a house, but 10 years later, Denise bought it back for him. She must have saved her pennies. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to the Taste of Country YouTube channel. Oh, and check back every Monday for more You Think You Know Country. Here's a couple of episodes we think you'll enjoy watching today.